One of the things that speeds up my workflow, specifically when I'm first starting out on a ZBrush model, is uh, using primitives. And even though ZBrush does give you quite a ways of creating primitives, like if you uh, choose one of these um, objects right here and then initialize them or use the PolyMesh 3D and initialize it here as a cube or a cylinder or a sphere or a grid, um, or uh, even using ZBrush's own um, insert mesh uh, primitives brush. Uh, however, I find these to be lacking in some of the things that I need, so I created my own insert mesh brush. It's uh, easy enough to do in ZBrush, and I've created two versions of it, one uh, that I'm giving away for free and another one that I'm giving away for a nominal fee. Uh, the one that I use, of course, is the one that uh, has more primitives, so the one I'm giving away for free has 15 primitives, and the one that I uh, am uh, giving away for a nominal fee has 33, and uh, I'll go ahead and show you how they work. So basically you just go to load brush and load them in. So of course there are the two and so I'll start out with loading the core one. So the core one is the one that has 15 different brushes uh, or 15 different uh, primitives. And as you can see here, um, I have three different versions of cubes, uh, four different spheres, two hemispheres, uh, three cylinders, and uh, three different pipe shapes. And these are all topologically quadded. So here, uh, if I go to the uh, gizmo or the move, you can see that I've got a basic cube uh, and I've got it subdivided once, subdivided twice. So that basically saves me a couple of steps. I can bring these in pretty quickly by easy, either uh, just drawing them onto my existing mesh or uh, using the mesh from brush function in the uh, geometry and um, modify topology section. So this mesh from brush option right there. And um, I also have a really basic sphere uh, and then that subdivided once, subdivided twice and spherized so it is in uh, sphere shape and subdivided yet again. So again, instead of doing those steps, I can very easily just go to the specific uh, object that I need. Uh, then I also have a couple of semispheres uh, and uh, these are actually closed up so they are closed in the back and uh, then I have cylinders and notice that these cylinders uh, don't have a pole here they're all quad cylinders and I've got sub that subdivided once and twice and then I've got a pipe object which basically has a really simple version then the subdivided and the subdivided uh, again so um, notice also that these uh, all of these have polygroups already done as well which is really useful and um, they are, again, really easy and quick to, to add. So let me go ahead and load up the, uh, the uh, Pro version. And the Pro version uh, has, again, as I mentioned, the exact same ones that we have before, but also has these two, uh, and let me switch over to move again so you can see them, has this one right here, which is a um, icosasphere, I guess, and the octasphere. So these are ones that are actually also available in the ZBrush primitives, but um, I thought they would be useful, so I included them in the Pro version. Uh, and then everything else is the same, uh, except uh, there are 33 different um, objects or primitives instead of 15. And uh, the additional ones are those two spheres that I showed you earlier, plus the capsule, but the capsule is all quadded. And also a semi-capsule, uh, again, closed up at the end. Uh, in two different resolutions and then this shape right here which is an extended cylinder and the extended cylinder with a hole. So I en ended up using a lot of these uh, when I'm working so I just made a quick ways of accessing them. Then I've got a chain link which is a really simple one and then a subdivided version and then these U shapes and uh, these kind of uh, U 90 degree shapes that I use to um, basically put on models as placeholders for things to uh, attach with ropes or uh, hooks or whatever. And then I've got a cylinder a, that is a um, T-shaped cylinder or a kind of an intersected cylinder. Again, that's all quads. And then I've got a plus uh, cylinder. Again, two cylinders intersected together. And uh, notice that I do have creasing on these. And then I've got this shape, which I'll show you what it is. I use this as a subtractive shape quite a bit. And then last but not least, I've got these two shapes, which basically are grids, but they are uh, diagonal grids. So uh, I find these really useful to use specifically if I do, uh, and I'll just go ahead and go to the Z modeler brush, uh, do things like this where I go ahead and inset these. 
uh, and do just the border and I can create a very quick mesh. Let me do that with all the polygons. I can create a, a grill like this pretty quickly and I can create a, small, a thin one, a thick one, etc. And the nice thing about this also is that if I dynamically subdivide it, it goes ahead and gives me this type of a grill with, with holes in it. So, um, and I've got two versions of these in the brush. So here, let me uh, switch back to uh, the pro brush here. And so I've got a planar version of that. And um, I also have a spherical version or a cylindrical version of it. So here, if I switch to that, you can see that it's the same shape, but it's cylindrical. And uh, again, if I go to the Z modeler brush, and uh, do the same thing. I get this type of shape pretty quickly. And uh, if I don't have it dynamically subdivided, um, I think I did a subdivision here. Let me delete the higher subdivision. And if I don't have this dynamically subdivided, uh, then it creates this shape. So um, again, they are two different ones. And uh, the, you know, the basic one is most what everybody needs. But if you do need these other shapes as well, then uh, you can pick up the pro version. So hopefully this helps you. And uh, happy ZBrushing. One last thing uh, I forgot to uh, to include in the video, and so here it is, is uh, a couple of things. One is to show you how Mesh from Brush works. So here, for example, if I want to use this specific shape, I can just select it. Uh, and then I can just click on uh, go to Geometry, Modify Topology, and click on Mesh from Brush. And what that will do is it will replace the existing mesh that I have or the existing subtool that I have with this specific subtool. So there it is. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is how to use this one shape over here. So if I click on this shape, uh, I can uh, go ahead and add it to my existing object. So there it is. And I use this shape quite a bit to create a uh, mechanically uh, kind of cutaway uh, to a um, to some sort of a a place where a screw is going to be added and whatnot. So there's one. And uh, usually I use this as, again, as I mentioned, it's a, as a subtractive shape. So I'm going to go out of perspective mode here and make sure that I've got this at a 90 degree angle. And then um, I'll go ahead and just split that off. So here I'm just going to split the unmasked points. So now I've got two different subtools. And then this one I would set to subtractive mode. And what I'll do here is I'll also create a second one. Uh, because I usually have a few of these, uh, let me, uh, I can create a third one or using array mesh, I can create a whole bunch of them. Uh, or I can actually even add them to an IMM curve brush and draw them out as well that way. And so now these are all subtractive. So here, if I go to uh, live Boolean mode and switch out of polyframe, you can see that it basically creates the shape. So um, it's kind of a, a nice shape to create. And usually these are smaller as well. So um, I can just scale these down and um, maybe move them out a bit like so. So they can kind of create this shape. And what's really great about these is that now if I go to dynamic subdivision, uh, since these are topologically sound, they will subdivide really nicely and give me these nice clean edges. So this one is a really uh, useful one to use as well. And I, again, use it just as a subtractive shape. And I use it quite a bit. So it's nice to have. And then I can just add that to existing objects and get things that look more or less like this, right? And uh, then I can just use another IMM brush with screws and whatnot to put the screws in here. But uh, this kind of creates this shape. And um, yeah, I thought I would, it would be a great way to show it to you. Uh, another uh, really quick thing here, and I'll use my mesh from brush function again to show you that, is that if I, uh, I'll go ahead and delete these now and uh, go to this uh, specific shape right here and use Mesh from Brush to bring it in. And the nice thing about this again is that it is a um, a fully quadded model and it is uh, sub D. So what I could do here is if I want my screw hole to be um, uh, a lot longer, like I can do that very easily. I can make it longer or shorter, right? So it's easy to modify these as well. And then um, also I can uh, set this at an angle and whatnot. So again, uh, just having the, the right topology for these things really makes a big difference. So hopefully you find that helpful. And uh, thanks again for watching.